Welcome back to Microsoft Access 2010 Beginner Level 1. For more free lessons on Microsoft Access, make sure to subscribe to my channel and visit my website at accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube. In Lesson 3, we're going to learn about the different parts of the Microsoft Access interface. Let's begin by starting Microsoft Access. Now you might have a quick launch icon for Microsoft Access on your Windows taskbar like I do. Or you might have a desktop shortcut for Microsoft Access 2010. But if not, just take your mouse and click on the start button in the bottom left corner. Now you might even see Microsoft Access show up on the start menu directly if you've used it recently. But if not, click on all programs click on the Microsoft Office folder and then click on Microsoft Access 2010. This opens up Microsoft Access. Now unlike Word and Excel, Access does not automatically start you in a blank document. We have to first create a database file. You'll see here in the center of the window a section called Available Templates. Now Microsoft has provided you with some pre-built databases that you can use if you're in a hurry. But we're here today to learn how to build a database from scratch. So I'm going to click on blank database. Now down in the bottom right corner you'll see a section to specify a file name for your database. Access wants to know what name you want to give your database. Right now it says database1.accdb you may or may not see that ACCDB depending on your Windows settings and whether or not you see file extensions. In either case, don't worry about it. That just tells Windows that this is an Access Database file. You can leave the file name Database 1 if you want to, but I like to give my databases descriptive names. So I'm going to click here and type in PC Resale Customer Database that is a fictional company that I've set up called PC Resale and we're going to build a customer database for this fictional company. Now below the file name you'll see the folder that Access is going to place this database file in. Right now mine is set to C colon backslash users Richard documents and that's okay for me. If you want to change it you can click on this little folder button right here and browse for a different folder to place your database in but since I'm happy with that folder, I'm going to click on the Create button. After you click on Create, Access builds a blank database in the folder specified, and it wants you to start building your first table. You'll see right here it says Table 1, and up top it says Table Tools. That's because Access started out by creating a blank table for us. Now I don't want to start by just entering data into a blank table. I want to define the table first. I want to set up the rules for this table. So I'm going to come over here and click on this X. That will close down this table. And now I'm left with a blank database container. For a Microsoft Access database, all of the objects in the database, all of the tables and queries and forms and reports and all the things we learned about earlier will be stored in one database file and that's the PC Resale Customer Database that we just created. Right now it's empty but we're going to put some stuff in it in just a minute. Now before we start actually working with the database let's learn about the parts of the Excel interface. If you've worked with Word or Excel You'll find a lot of this is the same, but there are a few different things. Across the very top of the access window, you'll find the title bar. The title bar will have the name of the current database. The file format that you're using, now this says Access 2007, don't worry. Access 2010 uses the Access 2007 file format, so that's perfectly normal. And then of course over here it says Microsoft Access. In the upper right corner, we have our familiar window controls. These include the minimize, restore or maximize buttons, and the close button. Below the title bar, 
we have the ribbon. The ribbon is a new menu interface that was introduced in Access 2007. If you've used versions of Access before 2007, you'll find the ribbon is a radically different menu interface. It was designed to group commands together to make things easier to find. Personally, I didn't care much for the ribbon when it first came out in Access 2007, but after working with it for a while, I finally came around. The ribbon really is better than the old menu interface. The ribbon is divided up into different tabs. Here you can see the Home tab, there's a File tab, a Create tab, where we'll go to Create Objects, External Data for working with data outside of our database, and more advanced database tools. We'll spend most of our time on the Create and Home tabs. Now right now you'll see that most of the features on the Home tab are grayed out. That's because we don't have any objects in our database yet. We don't have any tables or queries or forms to work with. So we'd have to create those things on the Create tab. Inside each tab, you can see the various command buttons are organized into groups. For example, these are all the buttons here that deal with creating tables. Here you can see queries, and then forms, and so on. Now the ribbon is designed to be dynamic. It will change based on what you're doing. It will also change based on how large your access window is. You can see as I resize my window, the buttons on the ribbon change. The groups will collapse or expand based on how much space they have available. So the menus you see on my screen might not look exactly the same on your screen. If you maximize your window, or make it larger by resizing it, you'll see the buttons take more space. If you can't remember what a button does, just hold your mouse over it. A little pop-up menu appears and explains what that button's function is. Now there are a lot of buttons up here, and we're not going to learn about all of them today, but eventually we'll cover all the buttons you need to build a great database. If screen space is at a premium and you don't have a lot of room in your window, you can minimize the ribbon by simply double clicking on one of the ribbon tabs. That will shrink it up and save you some more space. To bring it back, just double click again and that will re-expand the ribbon. You might see additional tabs on the ribbon based on what you're doing. For example, we started out earlier with a table already open. If I click on Create and then Table, you'll see the Table Tools section appears and there's two new tabs, Fields and Table. These are menu options that only appear if you're working with tables. So as you can see, Access automatically hides these commands if you're not working with tables. You don't need to see them. Again, I'll come over here and close this table. In the upper left corner of the window, you'll find the Quick Access Toolbar. The Quick Access Toolbar is right here, and out of the box, Access comes with Save, Undo, and Redo as commands on this toolbar. We'll talk about what these commands do in a little bit, but you can use the Quick Access Toolbar to add commands that you use all the time. Let's say, for example, that you always use the Table Design button. Well, you can right-click on it and go Add to Quick Access Toolbar, and that'll put a copy of that button right up here. Now you have access to that button no matter where you are on the ribbon. I'm going to get rid of it, though, by right-clicking on it and selecting Remove from Quick Access Toolbar. On the left side of the screen, you'll find the Navigation pane. This is where a list of all of your access objects will appear your forms, reports, tables, queries, and so on. Here I've opened one of my other databases, and you can see in the navigation pane a list of all of my tables, and if I scroll down, you'll see different groups for queries, forms, and reports. I can open up these groups by clicking on the little double chevron, and that'll open up all the queries. And here's all my forms. There's a lot of objects in this database. 
Until you create your first objects though, your navigation pane will be blank. You can resize the navigation pane if you'd like to by clicking on its rightmost border and dragging. You can also hide it completely by clicking on this button right here. And then this button again to open it. Way down here on the bottom of the window, you'll see the status bar. Most of the time, the status bar just says ready, but it does pop up occasional messages. You can also program it with custom prompts. Here, for example, it says this is the customer's first name when I click on the first name field in my customer form. We'll see how to do this in a future lesson. And finally, we have this big area here called the object pane. This is where the objects in your database will appear when you open them up. You could see tables here, queries, forms, reports, whatever other objects you open up. So that's a quick tour of the Microsoft Access interface. In the next lesson, we'll begin by building our first table. Make sure you subscribe to my channel right now. And also, don't forget to visit my website at accesslearningzone.com YouTube for more advanced lessons and other specials just for YouTube viewers.